In the years of 1985 through 1986, uh, boxing fans wanted a featherweight clash between Azuma Nelson and Barry McGuigan, as they both held portions of the title during this time span. But the fight didn't take place. Uh, Nelson wanted the fight a lot more than McGuigan did. He would insult his manhood in numerous magazine interviews, trying to goad the Irishman into taking the bout. But McGuigan barely made mention of Nelson in any of his own interviews. He was, he was the bigger draw, and perhaps he realized that it wasn't in his best interest to punch down to someone who was beneath him in terms of box office appeal. Azuma Nelson lost in his first shot at the big time against Salvador Sanchez, but went on a tear after that learning experience. Uh, he upset a heavily favored Wilfredo Gomez in Puerto Rico, and that may have been his most impressive victory. And Nelson was slightly behind on points on the official cards, and then simply steamrolled and exhausted Gomez in the 11th round. Now, the professor then dominated at featherweight for two years, and was seemingly avoided by counterpart Barry McGuigan for their proposed super fight. Uh, he finally moved up to junior lightweight to win a title belt there, but then he made a bad decision in moving up to lightweight and challenging Pernell Whitaker. Uh, Nelson was too small and really no match for Sweet Pea. So Nelson's peak years were probably between the years of 1984 through 1989. Uh, he was dominant and probably the most premier force from uh, 130 pounds and under during that time period. Now, Nelson was said to be suffering from malaria in his uh, disputed draw against Jeff Fennick, but bounced back and simply annihilated uh, the rugged Australian in eight rounds. Again, that might be one of his most uh, impressive performances, aside from that Wilfredo Gomez knockout. And uh, Nelson would remain competitive throughout his mid-30s, taking on the likes of uh, Gabriel, Gabriel Rielas, uh, Calvin Grove. He had a four-fight series with Jesse James Leha. He remained competitive for over 16 years in that division, which is a testament to his skill. Now, Barry McGuigan's prime and overall career was all too brief, but he deserves mention because of the massive popularity that he generated in his native Ireland. Uh, he was showcased on American television numerous times and was the featured piece in a lot of uh, boxing magazines during the, uh, the mid-1980s. He was tough, he was aggressive, he had constant head movement and always moved forward. He had a left hook to the head and body, which were lethal. He did have defensive vulnerabilities, and um, that inevitably led to his defeat. Chinks in his armor were revealed in what should have been a showcase fight against unknown Dominican Danilo Cabrera, and later McGuigan was fully exposed against Stevie Cruz, which was one of the better fights of the mid-1980s. Now, the Irishman had the type of fighting style that really wasn't suited for a long lifespan in the sport. Uh, he was the typical short fire plug that you know, burns out after just a few years. Uh, he did return two years after his first defeat. He fought a couple no-names before losing to Jim McDonnell on a fourth-round stoppage. So how would this fight play out? And, you know, overall, Nelson simply did everything better than McGuigan. And it shows when you look at their longevity in the sport. McGuigan really only had three good years, his rise in 1984, his title-winning effort in 1985, and then in losing the title in 1986. M meanwhile, Nelson burst on the scene uh, with his gallant performance against Salvador Sanchez in 1982, and he would fight at an elite level up until 1998. But despite Nelson's obvious advantage in his longevity in the sport, I think this would be a close fight up until about round 10 or so. McGuigan would be aggressive and dangerous early, and the professor wouldn't take any unnecessary chances in the first few rounds. But the combination of Nelson's strength and his finesse would take its toll on McGuigan, who never seemed like the most resilient of fighters when it came to facing adversity, especially in the later rounds. And Nelson would pick up the pace in the championship rounds, and he'd stop his man between the 11th and the 13th. Now, I've included two fights to showcase how these fighters looked in their respective primes. One is McGuigan defending his title against the speedy Bernard Taylor. The other is Azuma Nelson taking on McGuigan conqueror Jim McDonald.